What's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning into the channel. Welcome to Also oh Simplify. Coming to coming here with a video for you about how separation and loneliness foster growth, self-reliance, monk mode, and semen retention. So let's jump right into it. As always, I'll summarize it all at the top for people that just want to hear one or two minutes, and then I will jump into the whole thing, uh, break it down, then apply it to my life because most of these videos are really just you know essays to me about what i'm doing what i'm implementing what i'm thinking at the moment or what i wish i would have known in the past so getting right into this we'll start with the separation and loneliness piece now in order to grow you definitely have to separate yourself from your environment um if you stay in your environment you're going to keep the same behaviors thoughts and actions and with that you're going to produce the same result because you're responding to your environment this way already and you're running the script of your life in this way already now if something doesn't change which unless your environment itself changes that can foster something like a calamity um, or you have to actually pull yourself away from this which is the more evident because even when certain things happen people still operate the same way then but you have to pull yourself away which then is going to separate yourself and you're going to feel the loneliness once you have detached yourself from that particular environment to then have different thoughts then actions behaviors to get different results so in order to grow or for something to change that has to happen in the beginning now to jump into the self-reliance piece self-reliance nobody's going to come there and save you you have to really learn how to deal with things head on for yourself and this is something that really is my belief of what the educational system is supposed to be for is that you can go face the tasks that you have as a human being um, in order to operate in society but then also to feel you know well within yourself in terms of solving basic problems for yourself have that ability and go out and self-reliance is definitely a major piece now monk mode is the third piece monk mode is a a common topic that comes up in a lot of uh red pillar manosphere uh side of the world content uh many times and i think a lot of times it comes like in one or two ways one i think there is an authentic way of monk mode which is that i feel like this isn't something you choose it's something that chooses you in the sense that you're having a feeling in yourself that you're very conscious of cannot be solved by anything other people will understand which would lead to you understanding you have to grow in some capacity then separate yourself and have that loneliness and that's really what happens with monkhood because monkhood is not something that's easy if you've ever studied it um the other way would be something well actually i'll lead that more into the breakdown but basically that's really what monk mode is about it's not about um you know women and all this other stuff which generally how it comes up um and it also comes up with this next piece which is the last piece the semen retention which once again i think this is something that comes up a lot in the dating world but i think it has nothing to do with dating it has to do with your energy force sexual transmutation being able to take the energy that you naturally build up within your body um and use that uh, energy for something that can better help you like in, in terms of like if you believe in evolution at all like our whole life wasn't meant to just procreate all the time so some of this energy and life force has also should have other adaptable qualities to it if it is something that stays because it would go away at a certain piece so some some pieces of wanting to conquer do things achieve things help those are things that are coming from you know the semen retention which once again has nothing really to do with women that i also think is something that comes within you that you're like i need to keep this energy for something because the reason you're dissipating it is because you're thinking that dissipating it is going to answer something and when you get to a point where you don't feel like dissipating it is going to answer something you will stop now when i get into the breakdown i'll get deeper into how that all works because that's very much easier said than done so um that's it for the summary so hop off if you want but now i'll dig a little bit deeper so the separation and loneliness now this piece comes with a little bit of a um acceptance that you know you create your own reality now i read a lot of joe dispenza over the last year i personally have had kind of a spiritual like 
rabbit hole dive because I went through a few things, which I'll get through more when I apply things to my life. But um, to make a short story shorter, all of them talk about the fact that, you know, you have to, in order for you to get a certain reality, you have to be kind of like on a certain frequency, which really is just you are thinking and feeling thoughts that are in line with a certain thing. And in a tangible way, just think about the behaviors and actions when, you know, you're in an upset mood versus when you're in a positive mood. Things generally start to roll better because the intertwine of different things and you can think as esoteric as you want if your feelings are actually like getting shot out there and your intention getting shot out there. Or you can think about the more tangible, but any way that you uh, break it down, the way that you're thinking and feeling is literally creating a reality. So the only way you can change it is to zoom out and remove yourself from that environment, which puts you in the unknown. So the loneliness piece I talked about at the top, it's not just the loneliness you're gonna feel because you're separated from what you know. It's because you also know you're stepping into something you have no way of knowing. That if you were to go back, which is the reason most people always dibble in and dibble back as they leave, and then they feel this second piece of uneasy, which is not the uneasy of like, I'm detached from my community. The same thing as a lot of people that try to wake up early is a great metaphor. It's like waking up early isn't the hard part. It's like doing something when you wake up early. Like you have to have a plan for something you're going to do. If you're waking up at 6 and you don't have to leave until freaking 8.30, you're not going to go to the gym. I mean, you're not going to just wake up early and stay up unless you definitely have a plan that I have to be at the gym, you know, at 6.30. So you're then you might wake up at 6. But if you don't have something to do, you're not going to do that. And I think that's really the loneliness that you really have to bear it's a loneliness with yourself that maybe i don't know myself maybe i could be this whole other person that i've been thinking in my mind and all these things that are going to feel overwhelming because all of it's new and maybe the things i thought aren't the truth that's the part that's gonna really make you feel lonely because it's like not only is it the the physical environment that can remind you of yourself it's like you're breaking your own memories of yourself. And that's where that real loneliness comes to. And that's where the next piece comes to self-reliance. Self-reliance is really the fact that you know you can depend on yourself. And when you live in mythologies of the truth, you know you can't depend on yourself. Um, and when you don't separate, whether it's conscious or not, like, if you know that you're depending on the thought process that other people came up with. When you separate yourself from a minute, when you meditate and see your thoughts coming in and out and start to question, am I even generating these thoughts? Are these just thoughts like, like an ad that just, you know, they're just popping in my head like a scroll, but it's not like you choosing the scroll. Those kind of thoughts. When you start to go through um, the real meditation of where your thoughts and behaviors are really coming from, that is what's going to make you self-reliant. So it can be something like an obstacle, like you're trying to do something and you get hit with something that you don't know how to go over. This is where you're going to have to start questioning, am I the person I think I am? How do I develop myself into the person I think I am or want to be? And then from there, you can overcome it. But at the end of the day, self-reliance is the main thing that you should always be trying to game being able to live life on your own terms being able to i think ralph walder emerson who wrote an essay on self-reliance said like the hardest thing to be is yourself in a world that's trying to make you someone else and the more time you spend in circles with really other people or other things or media even at a certain point listening to me like at the end of the day the, the answers are was inside you the truth is inside you. Everything is within you already. Like a lot of this, you know, when I talk about getting into the esoteric stuff, it's like you're not like a drop in the ocean. You're the whole ocean in one drop. Like you're a part of the world too. 
just like the plant knows how to grow on its own, you know how to figure it out and move through society and be a human and become a, a functioning member, like, naturally. Like, it's a hard concept to really fully grasp, and I hope I'm making sense when I'm describing it here, but it's like, you're a part of the world, so why are you stressing out? If you just keep your thoughts and actions pure to the truth, and really think about the truth in terms of what you believe and why you believe it, apart from what everybody else says, how can it really be wrong? And there's many different parts of this coin. I can't make this video too long because obviously there's a way you can take it too far that you're not, you know, being tapped in. But uh, to like, there is a second part of this, but I digress. It's really self-reliance is the main key here. Um, the next part will be about monk mode and semen retention. I might kind of combine this into one because it's like really one thing to me. Um, so in terms of like the monk mode and the semen retention, like monk mode, I feel like some people keep saying it like it's an easier thing than it is. And what it is, is just you know, basically, it seems like the semen retention part is like the main part that people keep focusing on with monk mode. But what, what I think you should focus on really is that you have something inside you and it kind of keeps coming back to the same thing about like the truth. There's something inside you that cannot be quelled. So with monk mode, we'll start with monk mode, break down monk mode now. So it's something that chooses you, you don't choose it. What I mean by that is that you have to have a real reason to go down the pursuit of stripping away all your distractions. Um, it's not something like, like, you have to look at it like when you, if you watch Kill Bill or old Kung Fu movies, when you go down to the master, there's gonna be trials and tribulations. It's not gonna be just easy to develop you into this, it could be like that Shaolin warrior or into this person that's reached enlightenment unless you have a real reason to get there. You have a real reason why you're cutting all these things out you have a feeling within yourself that can't just be quelled by somebody just giving something to you you just getting something from your current environment you feel like and kind of always going all the way back to this separation like you feel like you need to grow you feel like there's something inside you that i need to inside myself that i need to explore that i need to separate cut out any distractions that could be things that are fun a lot of times people look at the you know chasing women you know you know the the semen retention piece definitely looking at vices and doing things that are like impairing your mind uh and and harming your body in in terms of like poisons and toxins uh eating bad food whatever you may may be and I also personally believe, because it's a, it's a layman's term, it's not like you're really going to a monastery, it's something for yourself, which is my main point of this whole monk mode thing, is that like, it's a path of self-reliance for yourself. You don't, and, and I, I think that sometimes, you know, I definitely hear in the, the dating realm sphere, a lot of these people are like, well, you don't need to go in monk mode, you gotta do both at the same time. Don't you know subjects in class? and. Stuff like that. And I think at a certain capacity, if you think going on monk mode, you're going to come out and be a Don Juan because you, you know, made money or achieved something, you're, you're out of your mind. You're going to be at basically the same level you were at prior to going in. Um, but the other aspect is wrong, too, that, like, you should be balancing all these things in your life. Like, you only got so much time in a day, and there's certain periods of your life that... Definitely if you're like a guy, which I guess this video is going to be more male focused, um, like certain things can take a back seat. And I would definitely say when it comes to like women and putting toxins in your body, like you could always do that. But your 20s and 30s from a physical aspect, from that uh, energy and desire aspect, because being even 32, I'm starting to already feel the feelings of like yo i gotta be in the workforce till i'm 65 dog like i'm not saying i don't want to work and do anything but like you know maybe i gotta figure out a way to pivot out of this uh with something like this that i can enjoy doing all the time because that does not sound like the pathway i want to go down you know what i mean so 
if you have those kind of thoughts in your mind of, you know, I have to focus. I have to transcend and grow like now to get to this point so that I can have that prosperity I want. Those are the things that are going to bring you to monk mode and have you actually be able to dedicate yourself to it. Whereas I think a lot of people talk about it and they might, one, not really be doing anything for it. It's just like essentially the semen retention piece, which it's a thing, but it ain't really that big of a thing um, to do. Like, I don't look at that as like a big accomplishment. It's like, I don't, I don't drink alcohol. Great. Like, I don't drink alcohol really either. I'll get into my thing later, but that's it with the monk mode. And now in terms of the semen retention, it kind of falls into the same thing. Like, I think people focus so much on the women piece and the pornography piece. Um, when I think it's really more of the idea going back, once again, the truth is inside you. That it, That's an energy force that's building with it inside you that is created by you. That you don't have to do anything. It ain't a coffee. It's not a freaking a pill. It is not like any. It's it's not pre workout. It's like an energy force that's just building within you, on its own. That we take all these stimulants all day, but we'll just release that one. Like why? And it's like when you start to really think about it a little bit deeper and take it to that second or third level of thought. That's a kind of crazy once again like distraction it's like you already have all the energy to do whatever you're pursuing to do and you're deciding to go against yourself not face yourself not be accountable self not be self-reliant and understand that you know your body is designed to basically do everything you need to do going also back to the whole you know you're the whole ocean in a drop like you already know how to exist you already know how to exist in your environment how come you know the tree doesn't ever question what to do or the deer question what to eat we have all these questions because we're we don't go back into ourselves and really just listen to the the feelings the thoughts the true thoughts that are coming from yourself and understanding the difference between your thoughts and other people's thoughts and, and moving towards that so that's really the entire breakdown of everything. But to apply it to my life, um, I feel like this has been a little bit more of like a year-ish journey. I would say 2024 for me is like really kicking off the journey hard um, in terms of like stepping it up and things are really starting to change. Um, and I definitely have that feeling of loneliness. I feel like I'm in a place where I'm really not around anybody that can fully comprehend what I'm going through. Like whether I talk to friends or family, I don't really know anybody that's doing or attempting the things I want to do. So the feelings that I have are just like only within me. And sometimes, you know, you, and I kind of have actually put myself in a place where I can't go back. And I felt like for years prior to this, just kind of even just talking with the whole pandemic, because I think that changed a lot for me, which is another piece of the environment being the catalyst, which you don't want it to be. You want to make yourself become that. But with the pandemic, it really changed my thinking on a lot of things that I really did want to kind of make this move. But I kept making the same decisions over and over and over again until I got to a point where I basically made this big investment that now I can't go back. Like. What I'm deciding to do has to work bar none or essentially everything I work for in my 20s would be poof. And from now on, I'm not even going to talk about it and it's going to work out. Uh, that's the term moving forward. Um, but that's that first piece. So that separation and loneliness, it's like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm making different decisions, but my back does feel slightly against the wall because I did make a different, one big different decision. And now I'm following that through to its, um, to its logical conclusion. Now, in terms of the self-reliance piece, I don't really have people to reach out to, to help me with, whether it be financially with knowledge wise that really understands what I'm doing, where I'm going. 
there are certain pieces of the capacity, my capacity that, you know, I'm, I want to do this MMA thing, take it where it can go. I want to do this YouTube thing and take it to where it can go. In terms of my job and sales, I want to, you know, make as much money and close as much commission as I can in that. So in each one of those realms, I do, I guess, have people that can advise me, but they don't really understand how I'm going to bring that all together and the vision that I have moving forward. And I have to rely on me to understand that the advice that I get to always filter it through my own ears because at the end of the day, I know the truth and what I want to do. And at the end of the day, I'm going to have to face myself in the mirror. And whenever you listen to people, you're really just listening to their perspective on the thing. It's not really, people rarely give you advice from your perspective. They really like put their, you know, their, their, their feet in your shoes and are looking, trying to look through your eyes. They're usually just looking at something based on the way they see it from their eyes, from where they stand there. So always take that in mind. And that's why I always feel like in the self-reliance piece, you have the last piece. Now in terms of monk mode and um, semen retention, I would say for me, starting with the monk mode piece, and I can just add the semen retention because it's the way I look at it. It's all just distraction elimination. And the point I'm at now, because the investment I made, it's gonna, in order for, in order, uh, for me to do what I'm, I'm, I'm doing and will do, I need to have a certain level of action. And that kind of leads me to only have a certain amount of time in a day. You know, if I'm training, working out, and you know, putting hours in at the job, I have to also go to New York some days, like basically three days a week between the training and uh, my job, that, it, things are going to have to fall out, whether those are things like I can't drink on the weekend. We might have a holiday party. I'm not going to drink. There's other things that I'll cut out. I, I'll cut out. I just don't want to say because I'm on camera now and I'm working somewhere. But you, if you look at my old videos, you could figure out what I'm talking about that. I'm cutting out in terms of even going to sleep late. Definitely chasing. Like I don't really do any kind of pursuing and looking to pursue and also in terms of my vital energy generally i don't ever feel like i should expel it and with that in mind it's something that i've always told myself oh i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop for this and i'm not saying i don't crack on some of these things here or there but i can see how they're just drifting away from my life and it really wasn't and why i'm saying it chooses you it's not like i'm like counting the days and doing all this other stuff. It's like, I don't really have time for that. Like my focus is so simple. That's why I like, oh, so simplified. My focus is so simple on one thing that these other things, like I can't deal with somebody else's emotion. Like, yes, there's two nights a week that I could fit a girl in. If you, if they could fit with my lifestyle, understand that we're not gonna be doing a lot um, and they wanna hang out and enjoy my company, I'm with it. But if you're going to start giving me grief about other stuff and trying to hit me up during the week and want additional attention, like I'm cool with not having it. And that's like, to me, that's what monk mode is. I just have a standard. Like, unless you fit this mold, this is the spot for you. I'm not bending at all because it's like, that's not what's important to me right now. What's important to me is proving something to myself that I can pull something off that I want to do in terms of, as I mentioned in my vital energy, like I don't want to release it because I'm trying to pull something off and I want every freaking bit of energy, every bit of help that my body can give me. And I'm trusting in myself that I'm going to figure something out that I don't know how it's going to turn out. And honestly, it's been about, it's been over a year at this point, I've been figuring it out. Maybe I don't have what it's going to be like in a year and a half, but month to month i've been making it work every single thing i'm not i haven't nobody's banging at my door or nothing like that like i keep staying one step ahead i'm gonna keep staying one step ahead but to get back to what the monk mode is it's really just having a standard for your life and saying that like this is what i'm after no matter what i'm not letting anything get into that and it's like a monk they're looking for enlightenment that's number one. Whether they got it, they got to sit under the rock 
for freaking 30 hours to, to reach it, that's what they're going to do. They're not going to listen to, um, you know, like they're not going to get pulled off by just some random scallywag walking down the street. And that's why a lot of these religious um, institutions generally had something against, you know, going to the temptation like that. And even when you think about people, a lot of these gurus, you know, when they get exposed to it, they can't even stand up to the temptation. So it's not easy, but it's having that purpose and that focus. And for me, maybe it's at a lowly point in terms of like real, real spirituality, because it's really just achievement based. But, um, you know, maybe those are just your levels of evolution. And this is me just kind of getting on a riff in terms of the way my mind works. Because I, at a certain point, once I've reached this next level, I'm really at the point where it's like, after this level, what else do I really need? I don't, once this is fully, you know, established, and then the things I'm doing here, I'm making, you know, a decent amount of money, I don't really live a lavish lifestyle and I become very content with it. And I think that's also part of the monk mode is being content with, the new reality you're creating. And I think that's where I should leave it. Um, that's it for this one. If you like the content, like, comment, subscribe. If you don't like, you know, leave a dislike. Any any feedback will do. Leave some comments. Any other topics you'd like me to cover. This one just kind of came off the top because I just saw a few videos being recommended. So felt like I should just jump in with it. Um, so until next time, you know what it is. Peace.